In this section, we will learn about the ribosome structure. The ribosome structure is the site for protein synthesis. It's highly conserved within all species of life and is composed of two unequal subunits, which consist of a distinct set of ribosomal RNA, rRNA, and ribosomal proteins, RPs, that combine to form a large nucleoprotein complex. Ribosomes from all living organisms harbor three tRNA binding sites called the A site, the P site, and the E site. The A site is responsible for the correct loading of the amino acyl tRNA. The P site, which carries the peptidyl tRNA, is the site of peptide bond formation. And the E site is where empty tRNA molecules will exit the ribosome. In the diagram, messenger RNA, shown in purple, docks with the ribosome in between the small and the large subunits, where it can be read and translated into the correct protein sequence. Here is a dynamic model of the ribosome in action. The process of translation consists of three phases. The first is initiation, where the ribosome, the messenger RNA, and the tRNA are assembled into a working machine. Elongation is the next phase, where the ribosome actively translates the messenger RNA into the nascent peptide. If a peptide is slated to be expressed in the plasma membrane or excreted from the cell, it will be translated into the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or RER. In this case, the ribosome actually docks with the membrane of the rough ER and will translate the protein directly into the lumen of the ER. Once elongation is complete, translation is terminated and the ribosome disassembles, releasing the messenger RNA molecule. Ribosomes from bacteria, archaea, and eukaryotes in the three-domain system resemble each other to a remarkable degree. They differ in their size, much of the rRNA sequence, and the ratio of proteins to RNA. Figure 11.16, shown here, shows the eukaryotic rRNA from the large subunit of the ribosome with highly conserved nucleotide elements that show 90% sequence identity within all the domains of life. These are termed universal conserved nucleotide elements, or CNEs. The difference in the sequence between eukaryotes and prokaryotes allows some antibiotics to kill bacteria by inhibiting their ribosomes, while leaving human ribosomes unaffected. Another major difference between the processes of transcription and translation within prokaryotes and eukaryotes is that in prokaryotic systems, there is no separation between the two processes. As such, the process of translation can begin before the process of transcription is complete. In the diagram shown, the long black line represents the DNA. Tailing off from the DNA are strands of messenger RNA that are being actively transcribed. You can see that the transcribed sequence gets longer as the transcription process proceeds. Once the transcript is long enough, ribosomes will begin to assemble onto the messenger RNA and begin the process of translation. This is shown as the black circles you can see that hundreds of ribosomes can assemble on the newly formed messenger RNA transcript prior to the transcription completion. Each ribosome is processing the production of a single protein copy. Thus, you can see there is an amplification process that occurs between transcription and translation as a single messenger RNA transcript can produce hundreds to thousands of copies of the protein prior to its degradation. The ribosome is made up of two subunits. The small subunit, shown on the left, 
is formed from the interaction of 21 different proteins and a 16S RNA molecule, whereas the large subunit contains 34 different proteins and two RNA molecules, a 23S and a 5S species. In both models, the proteins are shown in blue, whereas the rRNA is shown in orange and yellow. In the center of the large subunit, the active site, where peptide bond formation occurs, is shown in green. Assembly of the ribosome subunits is a multi-step process in both eukaryotes and prokaryotes. In eukaryotes, this involves the formation of the rRNA subunits with the appropriate RNA proteins. For the eukaryotic ribosome, the small subunit is labeled as 40S and the large subunit as 60S. Together, when fully assembled, they form an 80S particle. S stands for the Svedberg coefficient and refers to the sedimentation coefficient for the particles during their isolation. This is dependent on the mass, density, and folding pattern of the particles. So 40S plus 60S equals 80S in this case. Although the exact assembly of the 60S subunit is not currently known, a model has been postulated. As the transcription of the rRNA molecules occur, it quickly develops secondary structure, is processed, and assembles with assembly factor proteins and with ribosomal proteins. The assembly occurs within the nucleus of the cell at the location of the nucleolus. The peptidyl transfer domain of the large subunit is one of the last to form. Once it's assembled, it can be transported into the cytoplasm where it can be utilized during the translation process. In the next section, we'll look at the initiation phase of protein translation.